Moving on to the books. So the books have been amazing. Um, I've been doing little summary videos on the channel with Fazbear Frights. Uh, that that was awesome. Um, how has it been working on Fazbear Frights? It, it's actually really enjoyable. It's probably one of the most enjoyable things that I do because um, I just get to think up a really scary scenario, and then I create a maybe a, a 10 to 15 page story out of it. And then I have writers that I work with, obviously, and they take that and they really flesh it out and fill it out and add the details and turn it into a full length story. And I get to kind of just really see it come to life. Um, yeah, so it, it's been really enjoyable. And that's something that I really enjoy. It, it's 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 funny because it's one of those things where as long as I know that that's, that's something that's happening in my life, I might be at the gym or I might be watching a show and then suddenly something will come to mind. And I'll be like, oh, man, this, this is going to make a great story. And I get right home and I start working on it. Do you have a favorite story out of all of them? I think my favorite story, has, it, it, it's probably Bunny Call. I know oh. that's kind of an oddball choice, but there's a reason for it. Because some of these stories are based on my real life experiences. Bunny Call is not completely made up. Uh, I used to take my family to a family summer camp. Okay. This is one of my two, this is my two, my two oldest boys were maybe 11 and 12 at the time. No, no, no. I bet they were 13 or 14. It's hard to remember exactly when this was. But my, but then I had younger two that were just babies still. And whenever we showed up at camp and we were all in the auditorium signing up for activities, you know, it was rafting and boating. One of the things you could sign up for was a panda call. Okay. And a panda call was, it's a very deceiving title because what that meant is that early in the morning, a bunch of the camp counselors dressed as killer clowns <laughs> would come into your cabin and scare the crap out of your kids to wake them up early and drag them off to their daily activities. And so I signed up my two, my two oldest, you know, my, uh, Ian and Braden, you know, my old beta testers from whenever they, you know, for all their lives testing my games. I, I signed them up for it. I thought, oh, yeah, this will be kind of fun. It was kind of fun until the next morning started rolling around. I started thinking about what I'd done, you know. Because then the next morning, I woke up at five in the morning and I realized they're out there somewhere. Like the, this, this is happening right now. And I started listening for screams and I started listening for noises. And I even snuck out and went outside. And like it was dark and there were crickets chirping. And I was looking around and I, and I just thought to myself, somewhere out here in the dark, in these trees, are a bunch of clowns and they're coming to my cabin. <laughs> And, and it was it was it was a really really scary sensation. And so then I just went back inside and I, and I looked at my family sleeping. I looked at my baby sleeping and my my kids and my wife. And I was like, "What have I done? Like, what have I done?" <laughs> of course, it ended up not. Of course, it ended up not being a big deal because then I just heard a soft knock at the door and I opened it and there was a row of killer clowns. I said and I just said and I, and I just said I said never mind you guys and they just walked on. And so so what. So it wasn't a big deal, but it was still a really eerie feeling, feeling like I had signed up for something that I'd regretted and I couldn't undo it, you know? And so I based a bunny call on that. Oh, that's awesome. You said that you've got relatable stories. Um, do you have a relatable story with Fazgu? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, okay, it, it, listen, anytime there's a series of a whole bunch of different things, you're going to have some that are great, and then some that's like, well, like, what, what was going on with this? You know, I, I don't know how to explain the fads, but I'm sure I had something in mind that, that, that was really great, but, you know, they can't all be winners. <laughs> now, now, I will say, now, I will say a couple of the other ones that had real life connections. You know, sometimes you hear about people talking about their sleep paralysis demons or whatever. I, I, that's never really made sense to me, but now it kind of it kind of makes sense to me, and I don't know why it does. Yeah, every once in a while, a person will you'll you'll wake up, but you'll still be paralyzed in your sleep, and for some reason, I guess in that moment, you're still half dreaming, and so you have a tendency to still maybe see something before you fully wake up. And the blackbird creature was mine. That 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 creature on the cover of Blackbird is is my sleep paralysis demon what? because I was I was on vacation, I was by myself, and. I, and I don't know what the circumstances were. I feel like I was taking a midday nap, but I woke up with a jolt. And for a split second, I saw that thing standing over me and I couldn't move. And my body was tingling and I was just frozen up. And I, I was just so disoriented after that, but I never forgot that. And I knew immediately after that, it's like, I've got to get this into a story somewhere like this, this crazy looking creature. 
That is crazy. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. I, I've never had sleep paralysis, so I don't know what my creature would look like, but I hope it doesn't look like that. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a normal experience. I don't think it's an experience you should want to have. I don't I, yeah. I don't feel like it's a healthy thing. So yeah. if you, if that hasn't happened to you, I think you're in a good place. Do you have a least favorite story? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it I think it probably might be the Faz goo. Or no, I mean, come on. It's it's gotta be the one where uh the guy gets pregnant with Springtrap's baby. I'm not sure what I was thinking about. You know, again, that's one of those things where, oh man, this is gonna be really creepy. But then you, you step back and look at it from afar and you're like, ah, I don't know if this is a good idea. And I swear I wasn't picking on MatPat. That wasn't that wasn't a story designed with MatPat in mind. It really, really wasn't. You know, listen, whenever you're doing these stories for this long, eventually you just run out of names and you're yeah. gonna cover all the names, you know? Yeah. Eventually I'll get around to Daco, you know? <laughs> and so if you see Daco in one of these stories, it's not something personal, it's just because I ran out of names, you know? I don't know, Daco is a very specific name that you'd have to get to. <laughs> I, I probably have a few more to go through before I get to that, so you don't have anything to worry about. When doing my summary videos, um, and I know, I know a lot of people say the same, people who loved Goosebumps when they were kids uh, find these really relatable, right? Um, and I know kids at school now read Fazbear Frights like their, their Goosebumps books. And as a kid, my favourite TV show was Goosebumps. Would you ever think about uh, or like the idea of Fazbear Frights ever being like a TV show like Goosebumps where it's like a series of some of the best stories or something adapted? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um... And that's something that can definitely happen, um, especially now that the first movie came out and was successful. I think that really opens the door to lots of other potential opportunities. The only thing to be mindful of is I don't want to oversaturate the market and just create too much. And I think that um, sometimes sometimes we get a little bit of that where franchises have movies and too many TV shows and it just kind of waters everything down. But but I really do like that idea. And it, it is definitely something that could happen for sure. Awesome. 